organic chemistry is challenging because carbon can form so many kinds of compounds and the type of bonds that we have, whether it's a single bond or a double bond or a triple bond, um, that's a reflection of the hybridization of the uh, carbon orbitals. Let's just review that real quick. Suppose that we have just a simple um, ethane molecule where two carbons are joined together in a single bond. And of course, each has three hydrogens attached to it. Now, to describe this, we we'll use just a simple um, orbital block diagram. And in fact, you see we're going to use them a lot uh, throughout the series. And for carbon, there's a 2s orbital and then the 2p orbitals. 2s level and the 2p orbital levels. It has two electrons of opposite spin in the s orbital and a single electron in these p orbitals. Now here, where carbon has four single bonds, what happens is one of the electrons in the s orbital first gets promoted into the p orbital. So the block diagram looks like this now. That requires energy to do that, but the bonds that we can make as a result of doing that more than compensates for the energy that it takes to promote an electron from the 2s orbital up to the 2p orbital. And then remember what happens is the single s orbital and the 3p orbitals combine together to give an sp3, I should say sp3 hybridized orbitals. And we combine one, two, three, total of four atomic orbitals, and we get four equivalent molecular orbitals. When we say equivalent, they're all at the same energy level. And they all have contained a single electron. Remember there's a geometry to this as well. They actually form the corners of a tetrahedron. Um, we can try to at least provide a, root, a rough sketch of it. Here we would have a triangle say. In the middle would be the carbon nucleus and then it would be something like this. And again I'm certain your textbook has much better illustrations. We have this tetrahedron and then we have the four sp3 orbitals. Something like this. And these are at angles of 109 degrees to each other. And again this is not a very good diagram. You can probably find much better ones uh, in your textbook. We want to point out, though, is that now for the hydrogen atom, um, that's just going to be a simple s orbital, that's spherical, and there will be that overlap which forms the chemical bond with hydrogen, and that happens here, 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 and also with the other carbon atom. And that then is our arrangement when carbon is sp3 hybridized and we have four individual um, single bonds. Now, in the case of um, say ethylene, now we have a double bond between the two carbons. Each carbon has a hydrogen atom or two hydrogen atoms joined to it. Now here, again, the 
block orbital diagram for carbon, the 2s orbital, the 2p orbitals, like this, once again, one of the s electrons gets promoted to the empty p orbital. And then, in the case of, uh, say, ethylene, one of the s orbitals combines with two of the p orbitals. to provide us with an sp2 hybridization. And again, there's three atomic orbitals that got combined together. Then what emerges is three equivalent molecular orbitals, the sp2 ones, each has a single electron. And then we have one unhybridized p orbital left over, so to speak. So here are the three sp2 orbitals and then the single electron in the remaining p orbital. And remember, these are 120 degrees apart. So we have the carbon nucleus and then the sp2 orbitals, all in a plane. 120 degrees apart from each other. And then again, for the hydrogen atom, its 2s orbital overlaps to form that bond, and also with the carbon atoms. An sp2 orbital will overlap an sp2 orbital in the adjacent carbon. But now here, in this case, for each carbon then, this is an sp2 bond, so is this, and so is this, and in this carbon, sp2 bond here, here, and here, which takes care of all these electrons, but we still have, and for each carbon, has a single electron in the p orbital. Remember, this remaining p orbital is perpendicular to this plane. It can be going above and below the plane, or it could be going in front of and behind of the plane. So when forming that double bond, what happens is we have a carbon atom nucleus with the p orbital here, and then in the adjacent carbon one, carbon nucleus, it's here, and there is some lateral overlap with these p orbitals that forms the second bond, what we call the pi bond. And again, in that situation, carbon is now sp2 hybridized. And then we can have acetylene with a triple bond. And in this case, carbon is sp hybridized. Again, our basic block orbital diagram. Two electrons in here of opposite spin, but one of them gets promoted to the p orbital. And now, one s orbital and one p orbital combine to form an equivalent or equivalent sp orbitals. Two of them, we combine two atomic orbitals together and emerges two molecular orbitals, the sp one. They are of equal energy. They each contain a single electron. 
And these, remember, are 180 degrees apart. And then we have the unhybridized p orbitals, each containing a single electron. Now, the situation is carbon. sp orbital and another one 180 degrees from it and then this carbon is the same situation sp2 orbitals like this they overlap to form the single bond what we call the sigma bond and then hydrogen of course overlap to form the bond but now we've taken care of these, but each carbon still has these p orbital electrons. So they form a triple bond. In one case, we would have carbon and a p orbital like this, where they overlap, the lateral overlap. Then we also have, um, that would take care, say, of this one. Then we would also have p orbitals going into and out of the plane. They likewise overlap to form the second pi bond. So one sigma bond resulting from sp overlap. Another single bond from sps overlap. And then we have the two p orbitals, the pi electrons overlapping to give us the triple bond. Now, when we compare bond length, say with ethane, acetylene, or ethene, and acetylene, The sigma bond here, that has a length of about 1.54 angstroms. The sigma bond here is a little bit shorter. It's 1.47 angstroms. And the sigma bond here is a little bit shorter yet. That's 1.38 angstroms. And the reason why the single sigma bond decreases is because this was an overlap of sp3 orbitals. This was an overlap of sp2 orbitals. This was an overlap of sp orbitals. Notice then that as we go down, the amount of S character in our hybridized orbitals increases. 3P orbitals, only one S orbital. 2P orbitals with one S orbital, one P orbital, one S orbital. So here, these carbons have more S character than here in here, and of course the s orbital is closer to the nucleus, so these bonds are a little bit shorter because of the increased s character, the sigma bonds are. Um, also the more s character an atom has, the more electronegative it is. So if we had, say, um, a situation where you have an sp3 overlapping with an sp, there'd be other bonds here too. Um, here then, we would expect that there'd be a slight difference in electronegativity, and therefore the bonds might be a little bit stronger than if it was for two sp3s overlapping. And again, that's possible. We'll talk about that in more detail in um, later videos when we discuss uh, conjugation. Right now, we just want to point out that the sigma bond between 
ethane, ethylene, and acetylene gets a little bit shorter as we go down because of the increased amount of S character. Okay, um, I think we'll end the video here for now. It's getting a little bit long. What we want to do, though, is in the next video, consider the effect that lone electron pairs can have on bond strength because they can be a significant, um, they can cause a significant amount of destabilization. It can weaken the bond. And we want to talk about specific examples of that because we'll use those later on in our other series here for the uh, organic chemistry videos. So let's stop the video right here and then we'll get on to a more uh, substantive discussion in the next video. Um, a reminder that the playlist for the videos is at the website at digital-university.org. But come and join us in the next video. We'll continue our discussion and we'll try to have more meaningful examples as they apply to organic chemistry.